video we're gonna take a look at uh, income elasticity of demand pretty much all it is is that income elasticity of demand measures how the ch quantity demanded of a good responds to a change in income other things remaining the same and in layman's term that pretty much means how will the quantity demanded of the good change with respect to a change in income and if it was you it was it would be how much more would you demand if you got a raise? Kind of, that's the kind of idea behind it. And the formula for that is income elasticity of demand equals the percentage change in quantity demanded over the percentage change in income. And this should look pretty familiar because all we changed is the denominator. Before the denominator was the percentage change in the price of a substitute or complement. Now it's the percentage change in income because we're dealing with income. Now, a couple of notes about the income elasticity of demand. The income elasticity of demand can be positive or negative, and they can fall into three ranges. The income elasticity of demand, when it is greater than run, when it is greater than one, the demand is income elastic and the good is a normal good. But when the income elasticity of demand is greater than zero but less than one, the demand is income inelastic and the good is a normal good. Now, when the income elasticity of demand is in is less than uh, zero, that is, it is negative, then the good is an inferior good. And we will talk more about inferior good or normal goods in, uh, in a later video, but they're pretty intuitive. Uh, so here I have two graphs that we will go over. And these kind of tie into what we will learn in the in the in future videos. And I'm just trying to give you, a, give you guys a taste of uh, what we're gonna get into. In, uh, in a bit. So uh, I'm just going to take a quick go through of these uh, graphs and uh, they're not really important but you should uh, keep them in the edges of your mind. So here we have a simple supply supply and demand curve. We have, well we have, I forgot what the proper name is, but we have our supply curve and we have our demand curve, demand curve and we have the intersection. So let's assume that there's an increase in demand. Well, when there's an increase in demand, that could bring uh, either one of these two situations. So it could bring, in this situation, it could bring a large price increase. So back in our original line, in our original intersection, it was, uh, it was 20, the price of pizza, uh, the price of a pizza was, uh, was uh, $20. And uh, the quantity demanded was uh, was ten pizzas per hour. Now, uh, when we raise the price, when we uh, or when the demand curve shifts to D two or D one, there's an increase in demand. What could happen is there could be a large, large price change, and there could be a small increase in quantity supplied. And this is pretty much tying into what we will learn in uh, future videos. But um, I guess you can think of this as uh, um, as an inelastic good. Uh, well, I don't really know. Uh, so scratch that. I don't. I don't remember which good would tie into this kind of graph. But yeah, I'm just saying that for an increase in demand. It could bring uh, two situations, uh, which is one of these two. Now, for this second graph, what we see here is there's an increase in demand. Uh, demand D0 goes to D1. And um, what we see is that there's actually a small price change, which is from this black dot to this red line. So pretty much like increased by a dollar. And um, on the, but on the other hand, there's a big increase in quantity supplied. So there's a big increase in quantity supplied. So in a way, we can really think of... Um, so let's just use this example. So say that we got a raise and so our income increased. When our income increased, we demand more. So there's an increase in demand. Now this graph fits this second point more than it does the other points because we can think in, in this situation, the pizza is uh, inelastic good. That means that uh, no matter 
how our income changes, we will still always buy the same amount. And that is why when we there's an increase in demand, we still buy the same amount. So the suppliers won't supply us uh, with uh, way more pizzas like they do in the second graph. All they'll do is they'll just increase the price. And the, there's a small increase in quantity to supply because um, people will buy the same amount. Now, this second graph represents the first point more than it does the other two. And that is because uh, if you think about it, uh, the pizza as a normal good, as something that we just normally splurge our money on, then um, there's, an, there's a big increase in demand. And then there's uh, there's a small increase in price because if there's a big increase in price then we probably won't buy it but there's a, if there's a small increase in price then we'll probably buy it and we'll probably want big quantities of it and for the last point well if there's an in, if we increased our income then the demand will actually go left rather than right because it's an inferior good for inferior goods it does the opposite of what what we what uh well, what we will think will happen when our income rises. That is, it'll move to the it'll move to the left because you, you know when we have money, why would we want to buy an inferior good? We would much rather buy the normal good, the good that we want, the good that we want to splurge on. So that's the idea behind that. I hope you actually learned something. But uh, please rate, comment, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.